please ask. Now, what if you put the underscore before the backslash? I did that earlier, and um, it just it looks. Let me let me put them for contrast. It just looks more messy because the underscores are not lined up. Like this this one looks better to me than that one, but they both work. You could do it any way that you want, right? Does the backslash just escape spaces and identifiers or other characters as well? I don't know what other characters would do. You mean you mean you want to be able to have a run of an arbitrary number of characters and it would escape them? And then you wouldn't be able to do this and just have a backslash and then nothing. So I don't know. Can you overload structs, multiple structs under the same name taking different parameters? Uh, currently you cannot. And um, I am thinking that we're not going to try that in version one of the language because it just has a lot of um, implications, I think. Uh, and at some point, we just have to call it and say, like, look, this is version one. We're going to make it production ready and then think about version two. That said, um, I mean, why isn't it weird that in a lot of these procedural languages, you can only overload procedures? Like, what makes procedures so special, right? So it's a question I'm thinking about in the background. Could it be possible to have no special character for the alignment and simply ignore extra spaces? Not really, because um, then your grammar would have to disallow ever having two identifiers next to each other, which then implies that you have to have a parentheses in a lot of places you might otherwise not have. Although maybe, I mean, I haven't thought about it, maybe that would actually work if I just put parentheses in a couple places. But even stuff like, you wouldn't be able to do this. Like if you say like for a in array, blah, 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 right? Well, is for a a keyword or is that an identifier called for a, right? I mean, it's, can type arguments be must? In a struct? Um, they're always must because you can't like if you don't give an optional value and I showed during this demo that I broke optional values so let me let me put that in right uh, demo uh, struct poly matching uh, default argument to counter did not work How are you currently handling tabs as opposed to the Elixir doesn't care about tabs or spaces and it shouldn't. What about multiple underlines being treated as a single underline in names? Well, you could try that, but then it only works for underlines. What if somebody uses camel case, right? I mean, if I wanted to enforce a certain identifier style, I could do that, but it's, it doesn't seem that great. Will you add a way to namespace functions? You already can? I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, what do I think about this hurting searchability? Well, I mean, hopefully whatever you use would know how to do that. <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess it does make it harder to search for things if if your search doesn't understand this escaping then yeah it would make it harder to search for things so if you use this you want to make sure that you have something that understands it for polymorphic procedures does the entire code get duplicated for each different type instantiated or only parts depending on the type. No, the whole procedure gets recompiled every time. Um, I mean, 
If you reinstantiate something with exactly the same types, it'll use the old one, but anytime you change any of the types, the whole thing rebuilds. I don't think you want the compiler to try and be smarter about that. If we had speed problems in compilation, I think maybe we might do that, but we don't have speed problems right now, so yeah. If I were using that polymorphic counter and pass that to the function, does the function get my whole class? Only the counterpart and the real question, does it even matter which one it gets? Well, that's the difference I was talking about before. Okay, so if you do this, if you do the equivalent of this, this is table and not counter, but it's the same thing. If you do this, it only gets the table part. If you do this, it gets the whole type. T becomes the whole type. And the type happens to implement table or have table, but you still get that, the whole type, and can do whatever you want with it. Are you still thinking about having macro-like expandable options inside polymorphic functions and structs that you can pass parameters to at call sites? Wait for the next demo. Would it be possible for a user to add their own custom type info structures for certain types? That would not even make sense. Um, because the type info structures already represent every type possible in the language. Every, so when you compile your program, every single type that the program is able to express, because they must have been expressed at compile time, you can't make new types at runtime, every single type is in the table of type infos. So what even would you add? Are we sure that is the best way to spend the backslash character? Why not just have the editor to write justify everything that appears on the left side of the assignment? Well, you can't really solve it that way because, you know, like, like write justifying solves that specific case. But if it's like this, right, and then you write justify, then it's going to be messed up on the left, right? So, um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure it's the best way to spend the backslash character. It's just, consider it more like experimenting with a feature idea. It's not like, oh, it's definitely, you know, nothing I show is definitely going to be that way in the final language. Um, do I hesitate to put syntax features in demos, expecting the entire Q&A to be just syntax? Yes. I dread it, and I knew it would happen. By namespace functions, I mean put functions inside of a struct so they're easier to find in big projects. You already can do that. Um, you know, I, let, let, me, let me make sure that I left this in a compilable state. Yeah, so you can, for example, uh, oh, catalog was up here. Um, let's go to like counter, because that's the one we talked the most about. You could put increment on counter, right? And then I could even do this. This is one I hope again the compiler doesn't break. I've been I've been doing lots of hacking on the compiler. But you could do that even so I could find it in the local scope without having to dereference it all the time. And that should work. Attempt to call it oh it didn't work. <sighs> Alright, I'm not gonna try and do new things anymore until I've tested them. There's just two. Sometimes I go through phases of like really hardening the compiler and sometimes um, sometimes it doesn't work. That should have worked. I think it didn't work. I think it didn't work because this is polymorphic and it's not instantiatable as a value. But in the, so if this were a non-constant declaration, it just would have failed, and we would just need a better error message in that case. But for a constant declaration, I feel like we ought to just do it, and we're just not handling that case. So we should. But uh, just to finish this example, right, if I go to everyone who calls increment, 
and say counter dot. Let me just do it on one or two and make sure it works. Like that, that should. It just doesn't. All right, never mind. That's just a bug, though. You're supposed to be able to do it. Uh, a while ago, I demoed a smarter macro facility. Have I considered applying that to cases? Let's, OK, hold on. Let me just finish this. I just want to prove that this actually works. Let's do it with a non-polymorphic thing. So catalog, foo. That ought to work, right? So where's my catalog? So I have a cat. I say print info and cat dot foo of cat. I hope that works. Attempt. To okay. Now I have some work to do. This. Oh, because catalog's polymorphic also. Right. It just doesn't work with polymorphics right now. Let's try it with non-polymorphics. That's about as simple as we can get. Do I have an A in this routine already? No, that's in the elsewhere. OK, because I deleted increment now. This is just a mess. OK, so it finally worked. So this shows you that the namespacing, well, let's run it. Where, foo, there's our foo. So this just shows you that the namespacing works. Um, it's not working in the case of polymorphic things yet, but that'll be a good uh, next debugging stream. Anyway, James Wooden is saying, a while ago, you demoed a smarter macro facility. Have you considered applying that to cases like where you use the backslash? Um, well, there is no macro facility. I mean, the macro facility is you can make your own preprocessor, right? There just isn't a preprocessor. So uh, there is, and there is no macro facility right now. So I'm not, I'm not sure what you are referring to. Can you pass a type containing a table to table add one? Yes. Or oh, wait, table add one? Which one is that? Yes, you can. But table add one will only see the table. Can you do inline assembler? Not yet, but it, that is in the plan. Inline assembler is in the plan, in the roadmap. Are there old features other than SOA that you think have been sufficiently supplemented by new features or metaprogramming? Um, well, the, the check functions, which were in the first demo, those are gone now uh, because they're not necessary. Um, There's probably some smaller things, um, but for the most part, everything has been sort of moving forward. There hasn't been a whole lot of removing things, although SOA is kind of complicated inside the compiler. So when we manage to re-implement that, it'll be good to have removed it. You meant a macro facility that is smarter than C macros. No, we don't, we don't have any macro facility right now. We're going to in the next demo, but we don't right now. So I don't know if you saw someone else's demo and misremembered it, or if you're referring to something that I don't understand. Is there a way to overwrite what is printed when you try to print a struct? In Java, you would override two string. And, yeah, um, there is a way to do that right now. I demoed it actually way back somewhere when I demoed the print statement. Um, but I'm not sure it's the best way to do it, but you can go back and watch that demo if you want to see how it works. 
Uh, SOA is currently deprecated, yeah. If you try to use it right now, it won't work. And the reason is, because um, I have a better idea. When you put a const procedure inside a struct, does that occupy space in instances of the struct? No, it does not. So it's just a compile time constant. It has no runtime existence. Someone says, I don't think you should make the polymorphism work, count it out whatever, even if it's not a polymorphic method, should point to a real function pointer, but counter t dot methods address changes based on the type instantiation. Um, but it's, it's, if it's a compile time constant, it has no address in that sense, right? It has no storage on the struct. Um, I do need to think about it though, because there might be, um, there, there might be some reason why it doesn't actually make sense, but I think it does make sense. I think you should just be able to do it. So that'll be a fun stream is when I go fix that. Can you set the size of integer fields on structs? I mean, you have integer types, right? So U32 is a 32 bit unsigned integer, so you can do that for example. In theory, you could write some code at compile time that would check variable names. So if you didn't like the backslash or you wanted all functions to be capitalized or whatever, you could throw, yeah, you can definitely do that. Like if you wanted to prohibit backslashes in your code, you can do that very easily right now. Is there a way to pass all the local variables of a function as a kind of polymorphic struct. There isn't yet, but I've been thinking about implementing that because it's kind of an obvious thing. I'm just, I'm not completely sure that it's as useful as you would expect, uh, but maybe it is, and maybe we should do it. You meant to say, can you set the size in bits? No, you have eight, 16, 24, 32 bits, 64. Or eight, 16, 32, and 64 bits. Um, all right, uh, that seems like all the very specific questions. I have stuff to go do tonight, so I'm going to sign off. Thanks for coming to this short demo. Uh, we'll do a stream soon where we fix that uh, polymorphism bug and or if there's a complication with it, figure out why and what that means. And yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do that soon. Uh, the next demo may not be for a little bit because we've got to, you know, I, I don't want to leave bugs that major hanging around, so those need to get fixed. Uh, and then the next feature is pretty big, so it may take a little bit of time, so we'll see. Uh, thanks for coming by. I'll see you guys all later. <laughs>